Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm out the range for another First Shots video. This time I've brought out the new Trigicon MRO Red Dot Sight. A lot of hype right now online about this new Red Dot Sight, and I wanted to find out more about it. Now these things are kind of hard to come by. They just released my local gun shop, Bly Sports in Valparaiso, Indiana. Got a small shipment in. Of course, they went out the door as soon as they came in. Everybody's really interested in the sight. This is replacing, I hope, the SRS, which you've seen me talk about in the past, which wasn't such a great sight in my opinion. This one is smaller, lighter, and has more features than the SRS, and it appears so far to be a lot better in terms of the quality of the Red Dot Sight overall. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later, probably in future videos when I do a comparison, I'll show you both of those Red Dot Sights. So what is it about this site that's exciting people besides just the price point? And when I say a low price, we're talking about a site that I found online at Amazon for as little as $544, assuming they have them in stock. So the price is certainly right. So what does it offer other, other than that? Well, first of all, it has a very large field of view. It's more EOTech and feel when you're looking through the site. Okay, when you're looking through something like a T1 Micro, which is one of my favorite sites historically in the new T2 Micro, it feels like you're looking through a tube. Not so with this. If you look at the objective side of the lens, you'll notice that's really big. But if you look at the ocular side, the side that's closest to your eye, you'll notice it's relatively normal sized, about the same size as a matter of fact as a T1 Micro. However, when you look through this site, all I can really see in my peripheral vision is the knob up here, and just a shadow, a black ring around the sight picture, which is really large. It looks really, really good. And then it has a two MOA dot as well. So it's a fairly precise dot. On top, you have an adjustment tower. If you turn it to what would be my right, you have six brightness settings. So it's very easy to make adjustments to. But what I've also noticed on its brightest setting, which is six, I can look almost directly at the sun and I still have a dot. I don't see any ghosting around the, around the dot whatsoever when I point it towards a bright light source, which is one of my complaints of the SRS. It has adjustments for windage and elevation, of course, and they're conveniently located. The overall size of the site is very small and it comes with available riser mounts. Right now, this is just the flat base, which I have mounted to my FNC. So I figured I'd bring out a really cool new sight and put it on a really cool old rifle. The FNC is something that was produced in the 80s by FN. One country I know of for sure adopted it. The Swedes adopted it as the AK-5. And I'll give you guys a peek inside of the rifle as well in this video. I've mounted it, by the way, via a Stormworks rail system. The FNC didn't originally come with the 1913 rail on top. As a matter of fact, 1913 had yet to be invented when the gun came to market. But Stormworks makes this mount, which attaches to the FNC's mounting system, which it did come with back in the day. And so that's how I was able to get the MRO onto it. All right, guys, so let's do a little bit of shooting with the MRO. I'll give you some initial thoughts, and I'll follow up in future videos and let you guys know how the site's holding up. I also plan on taking the site and beating the snot out of it. I know how tough the Aimpoint T1 and T2 Micros are. I'm going to find out how tough this MRO is. We're going to throw it in the water. We're going to beat it with 2x4s. We're going to drop it. We're going to abuse it and see how it holds up, but not in this video. Let's take a closer look at the site. Okay guys, so I've got the FNC all loaded up and ready to go. I have the MRO sighted in. It didn't take us very long to get the sight sighted in. As a matter of fact, left and right was pretty much close to already being on right out of the box. I just needed to adjust the elevation. Now we've only sighted the rifle in for 50 yards, so chances are where we're at right now in relation to the challenge targets that we have down range. And when I say challenge targets, those paper targets are being held by challenge target, target holders. Uh, we're not gonna shoot steel at this close of range except for that one white steel target there in the center. That's our beater target that we're hammering the heck out of at close range with rifle rounds to see how well it holds up, and it too is a challenge target. So we've got the gun loaded up. We've got it zeroed for 50 yards, so it may be just a little bit low from the range that we're at right now, which is about 25 yards. And we're just gonna see how little sight works, how quickly it is to pick up the dot, or how quickly and easily I can pick up the dot moving from target to target. Just running a few drills. All right, charge the rifle. Let's see how it does.
Yeah. That sight works really, really well, guys. I really like that wide field of view. Again, it reminds me of an EOTech. Kind of a weird sight picture, though, again. Head's just up a little bit too high on this rifle. Yeah, I might try it on an AR-15 and some other rifles here in the near future. I haven't picked the rifle I'm going to abuse the sight with just yet. I'm open for suggestions. What rifle would you like me to see abuse along with this red dot sight? Put your comments down below. Just for the sake of comparison, I'm going to run the same drill, this time with my Bren 805 pistol with the SIG brace on it and the Aimpoint T2 Micro. I just want to get a feel for how similar or dissimilar the sight pictures are and which one perhaps is easier to pick up. Let's do a little shooting. All right, so what do we learn? Well, the aim point's still a very easy sight to use, okay? it picks up very easily. The field of view is smaller. So I do like the MRO's larger field of view. I'm always gonna favor a slightly larger field of view. But it does not mean that the T1 or T2 micro is hard to pick up, it's not. It comes up very quickly, but it still does look like you're looking through a tube where the MRO just looks bigger and brighter. So perhaps as you're bringing your face down, you're gonna be able to pick up that dot just a millisecond faster because you have a larger field of view. With a red dot sight, the dot doesn't have to be perfectly centered in your field of view. If it's high, low, left, or right, it's still gonna hit the target in theory because parallax is an issue, is not an issue with these sights. So, I do like the MRO sight picture better, but I can't say functionally it's gonna make much of a difference in the long run. It just looks nicer. All right, guys, let's take a look at what's in the box. What's in the box? What's in the box? Hopefully you get the movie reference. Okay. In typical Trigicon fashion, they make a box that's about 100 times bigger than the product that it, it contains. But this is the label you'll find on the side. It'll tell you it's a MRO. It'll tell you how big the dot is, all that good stuff. There's one big lever that you can flip right here, which will open up the box. MRO will be sitting right here in this spacious foam padding. Underneath, you're going to find a battery, and the battery is an ECR 2032 lithium ion battery. And you're going to have a little cleaning cloth, and you're going to have an owner's manual, which you should probably read, which I have yet to read. I'm really, really bad about that. So, this is my first time looking at the owner's manual. And uh, you probably should read that if you buy one of these, it's always a good idea because you'll do stupid things and wonder why it's not working. And then uh, you crack open the owner's manual and you'll realize, oh my gosh, that's why. I've done that many, many times in my life, and I'll do it again, probably with the MRO. Now here's some other things that the MRO, our, uh, MRO can use. I don't know why I struggle with MRO. You'd think it'd be a very simple acronym to pronounce, but for whatever reason, my speech impediment prevents me from saying MRO very quickly. These are the different riser mounts, a medium, and a high, and then the, the one that I have on the gun currently, which is the lower flush mount. So there you have it. It looks like a T1 micro type hole pattern. I do not believe it is. People are currently working on making quick detach mount systems. Companies like American Defense Manufacturing and some others are working on quick detach mounts just for the MRO. So I'll have to try it with one of my aim points, but I think the whole pattern is just a little bit closer here. It probably doesn't work, even though it looks very similar. So that's what you're going to get in the box. Not your wife's head, your MRO. Here's a couple of things I've yet to talk about on the MRO. First of all, the adjustment towers are one half MOA adjustment, which means it's about one half of an inch every time you make one click at 100 yards. Both the elevation and the windage are one half MOA. On your tower here, this is where you make your adjustments for brightness. There are two off positions. This is the first off position with the knob turned all the way to my left as the shooter. The first setting will be a night vision setting. It's a little in. The next setting is a slightly brighter night vision setting. Now these two settings are intended to be used with light intensifiers or night vision devices. You're probably not going to see the dot without the aid of those devices. 
Your first daylight setting will be one, which will be for extremely low light, and two, another low light setting. Here at the half mast position is another dot, and this dot is another off position. So you can leave it either here or here and have it off, depending on whether or not you're running the site at night or if you're running it in daylight, you can use one of the two off positions. So this is where I normally leave it. The third brightness setting is something that I can see easily right now in these light conditions, which are shaded. You can turn it all the way up to six, which is super bright. You'll see a lot of blooming around the dot, but at, at, at five and six, even aiming it near the sun, I can still see the dot very clearly. So plenty of brightness settings. The battery compartment is located here on top as well. You'll notice it's boogered up a little bit. You can use the case of a bullet to make adjustments, the head of the bullet uh, for elevation and windage. I was using a 300 blackout case, which is the same thing as a 5.56 case. And you can use a coin, you know, a penny or a quarter or something to get this top cover off to access your battery compartment. Now you'll notice, again, it's a little bit boogered up, boogered up a little bit because uh, that anodization comes right off. It's uh, very easy to mar up. So if you're that type of person that cares about boogering your stuff up, You'll want to use something soft to take this off. Me, I don't care. There's your O-ring seal. Okay, so it is sealed from the elements, and inside you'll see your CR2032 battery. If you look at the objective side of the MRO, you'll notice a couple of things. First of all, the lens is coated, has an iridescent look to it. Of course, that's normal. You guys have seen that before on other optics. But what you may not realize is that that lens is in there at an angle. You may be able to see that Hopefully, the camera will catch it. It looks like it's in at an awkward angle. And that is by design, okay? Doesn't mean that your MRO is flawed. As a matter of fact, if you take a look at a site like a T1 or T2 Micro, you're gonna see the exact same thing. It's in there at an awkward angle. Again, it's done on purpose, more than likely, to control how the light enters the front of the site. I promised you guys a look inside of the FNC, so let's do that here really quick. First of all, let's talk about the gas settings. Right here is where it should normally be for regular use. For adverse conditions, you can flip that gas regulator over, and it's just a two-position gas system, okay? All right, taking the gun apart is very much like an AR-15. Take a push pin in the rear, pop it out. It'll hinge forward about that far. You also have the option of popping this front pin out and separating the upper and lowers completely. All right, inside you can see the trigger mechanism. It's an all aluminum lower machined. We'll just set that aside here really quick and focus on the upper. And there's a reason they call this thing the AK-5, and that's because, like I said, it's very much like an AK-47. Here in the rear, you want to pull down this metal tab and start it moving rearward, which will allow you to start to draw your bolt and carrier out. Over here you have a spring-loaded dust cover, and this is something even the AK-47 could benefit from. With this thing closed, it, it closes the system so that debris can't get into the action. As it moves rearward, you can see how that springs up and moves around the motion of the charging handle going past. So the mechanism is always sealed from debris. I think it's a really interesting design, and it's very simple. Pull the bolt to the rear until the charging handle hits its takedown point. Just pull it out, okay? And now your bolt's gonna be free and carrier to slide right out the rear of the gun. And it'll just keep coming and coming and coming and coming because that is a long stroke gas piston system just like the AK-47. The bolt is just like an AK-47, although none of the parts are compatible with any AKs that I'm aware of. But to take the bolt out of the carrier, you just push it back, rotate it, and take it out. You'll notice the firing pin and spring are still inside there. So, as you can see, what the Belgians did was improve, in my opinion, upon the AK system, and I do think the FNC is an improvement. Gun does not lock open on the last shot fired. All right, to put it back together, just put the gas piston system in, slide it together like that. Make sure you put your charging handle back in its appropriate slot here. There's no wrong way to put the gun together. All right, make sure that that little rear tab is flush like that. And you're gonna grab your lower receiver and just pin them back together like you would an AR-15. 
All right, the rifle's back together. A very, very interesting rifle design, and I really do like the FNC. I wish they'd bring it back to market. It's a beautiful rifle, shoots it very, very well. I hope you guys enjoyed taking a first quick look at the new Trichicon MRO Red Dot Sight. I can't give you a full opinion on the sight just yet. This is my first range session with the sight, but what I will say is, it seems to be a good value at 550 bucks or thereabouts. That's the price I'm finding them online right now. How's it gonna hold up? Well, stick around and watch for future videos. And I'll tell you, like I said, I plan on mistreating this site quite a bit. I'm gonna drop it, submerge it, bang it around, freeze it, everything I can think of to subject it to extreme torture to see how it holds up compared to other sites that are on the market. I'm gonna go ahead and hazard a guess and say it's probably gonna do fairly well. I hope so. And if that's the case, at 550 bucks or so, it's gonna be one heck of a deal and one hard sight to top on the market. So, only time will tell. And I want you guys to stay tuned, and I'll keep you updated on the progress of the testing of the MRO site. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll talk to you guys soon.